Playing on tour takes years of dedication, hours of practice, focused precision, and nerves of steel. That's how you become great at the game, but not how you should bank. That's why Ali Ewing chose Renaissance Bank. Their easy-to-use app makes banking a breeze, no matter where she is. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Here, you can be your best. The best train here. Learn here. Succeed here. Perform here. Win here. Thrive here. Itawamba Community College. The best start here. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the ICC Hour here on Super Talk Mississippi 101.9 FM. I'm Adam Gore and I appreciate you guys taking time out of every Tuesday to join us here for the ICC Hour. And the ICC Hour is made possible thanks to our friends over at Renaissance Bank. Ooh, rumble. Let's give her a Renaissance replay. Make the right call with Renaissance and get cell phone protection with Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking. Sign up today. Now, this week's show, we're going to talk with Mr. Nathan Ward about the supplementary instruction program here at ICC, or a lot easier to be said, the SI program that we offer here at the college. Nathan will tell us about the program, how it works, and its very unique way to connect students to students to help them be more successful in the classroom. We'll learn what, pro, what the program offers uh, and how the program has grown over the years as well. Then we'll talk with Ms. Tyranny Key. She is a recruiter on our Tupelo campus, and she'll tell us more about the Code Red and Blue event that's coming up this Friday over on our Tupelo campus. Then we'll be joined by Ms. Madison Haley, who is a recruiter here on the Fulton campus, and Mr. Michael Holloway, the Director of Recruitment and Orientation here at ICC. They'll tell us about the orientations uh, that are coming up here on our Fulton and Tupelo campuses, how you can sign up, what you can expect, and a whole lot more about those orientations, which, by the way, this is something you want to get signed up for as soon as possible. These days always fill up so quickly. Uh, you can do that. Uh, first, got to register by apply.iccms.edu, but then after that, you want to go to iccms.edu slash orientation. That's iccms.edu slash orientation. Of course, we'll learn more about that uh, later on the show, but I do want to encourage you, yes, sign up for those orientation dates as soon as possible. Now, before we move on with the show, let's step inside the ICC Spotlight being presented by the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi and talk with ICC football coach Travis Macon about last week's National Signing Day. National Signing Day, you got an opportunity to sign some big-name players in the area. Just talk about uh, a clean signing day and how things go. Oh, it's been a great day. Um, all the guys that, you know, that told us told us that they were um, committed to us, they helped sign, and we have a big group from our district. Uh, we beat a, a lot of big programs on these guys. So uh, some of the guys uh, from Aberdeen, uh, Jay Walker, you know, he could have went anywhere in the state. He decided to stay at home and help with the change. Um, on top of that, on the offensive side of the ball, Thomas Klein, you know, he's another one that could have went anywhere he wanted to go. Played in the All-Star game, but he decided to stay at home and, you know, help us change this vision that we have. So it's been a great day for us. Coach, you, you mentioned vision. Uh, you did a, an incredible job turning around the home up. What kind of do you bring as far as changing the program and your vision here at Itawamba? Um, the vision is start a foundation, and the foundation is starting today. By getting these 30 guys to sign with us, they're building the foundation for us. So now we got to take the guys that are already here, and they got to add on to this foundation and keep getting better each time we go out there, whether it's in the classroom, on the football field, anything we do, we got to get better at it. 
We appreciate Coach Macon taking time out of his day to not only speak to us, but some of the media that attended uh, our VIP meet and greet with the coaches on National Signing Day. I do want to invite you to visit the football page on letsgoicc.com to get the complete list of this year's signees. We also have a few extra uh, special features from National Signing Day on our YouTube page. Simply search Let's Go ICC on YouTube. And I'll tell you what, do me a favor. Be sure to subscribe to the page while you're there. Your knee is a complex joint with many components, making it vulnerable to a variety of injuries. Some of the most common knee injuries include fractures, dislocations, sprains, and ligament tears. Many knee injuries can successfully be treated with simple measures such as bracing, rehabilitation, and exercise. The other, other injuries may require surgery to correct. At our injury clinic, we commonly see meniscal tears that occur during sports. Tears in the meniscus can occur when twisting, cutting, pivoting, or being tackled. Meniscal tears may also occur as a result of arthritis or aging. Just an awkward twist when getting up from a chair may be enough to cause a tear if the meniscus has weakened with age. The most common symptoms of meniscus tears are pain, stiffness, swelling, catching or locking of your knee, the sensation of your knee giving way, and, you, and if you are not able to move your knee through its full range of motion. The RICE protocol is effective for most sports-related injuries. RICE stands for Rest, Ice, Compression, and Elevation. Remember that at the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our story is you. Speaking of YouTube, we do want to invite you to check out our Live with the Tribe show. It's a show that's dedicated to athletics that airs each Friday afternoon. Uh, this past week, we talked to first-year uh, ICC softball coach Kelly Beth Ernest about the Indians opening their season this past weekend in Louisiana. And we also featured our assistant coaches talking about players that joined the Tribe on National Signing Day. By the way, congratulations to Coach Ernest on earning her first win as a collegiate head coach in dramatic fashion when the Indians, uh, they beat number 9 LSU Eunice on a walk-off single in the bottom of the seventh inning by Haley Alberson. The win kind of set the tone for the Indians for the rest of the weekend as they went 4-0 on their season opening road trip, picking up wins over South Arkansas, uh, National Park, and Bishop State. Now, baseball and tennis, they are scheduled to open their seasons this week as well. I tell you what, there's so much going on on campus. Uh, we also are hosting the uh, region, uh, one of the region high school tournaments this week is uh, on campus. So we want to encourage you to visit letsgoicc.com. Letsgoicc.com. You can keep up with what has happened and what's coming up athletically here at the college. And, of course, you can also visit iccms.edu. That's iccms.edu to keep up with everything going on non-athletic, non-athletically here at ICC. Now, if social media is your thing, uh, you can follow Itawamba CC for institutional updates. That's Itawamba CC and Let's Go ICC for athletic updates on your favorite social media platforms. When we come back, we'll be joined by Mr. Nathan Ward, and we'll learn more about the SI program and how ICC is going the extra mile in a new week, unique way to help students be successful in the classroom. Back with more with the ICC Hour presented by Renaissance Bank right after this. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we anticipate, what we work for, what we want to improve. At Itawamba Community College, we offer the courses, pathways, and the training that can help turn your vision of tomorrow into a reality. So why wait? Your tomorrow can start today at Itawamba Community College. The best start here. So when are you gonna give me back for the pizza? Oh, personal foul. Let's give him a Renaissance replay. Make a successful handoff when you transfer funds to friends and family with Zelle in the Renaissance mobile app. Let's give him a Renaissance replay. Make the right call for 24 7 roadside assistance and sign up for Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking today. I've gotten uh, several degrees in other subjects and I've been working restaurants most of my life so it kind of just fell into place to where let's get more experience, more information, more training so I can take over like a restaurant and manage. I've worked all around the state, out of state. I first started up in Memphis, worked around Virginia, 
moved down to Mississippi and then just uh, been working restaurants most of my life. You can work your way from the ground up, but there's also more things involved in that where you just need that extra level of training. And that's when I decided to go to go back to ICC and get my degree there again. It just kind of fell into place to where found, I found out that they were doing a hospitality program and I decided to apply. The online program, I was able to basically take, go to school around my work schedule so it's not like I'm having to take off from work and I could uh, get all my work done ahead of time and on specific, have everything turned in on specific days so I'm not having to play catch up anywhere or miss work. Just that right amount of time to where you get in, you get some training, you get some uh, learning and uh, possibly some uh, certifications under your belt and then when you get out into the uh, market it, it might help you uh, find a better place to start working on your career. Everything that uh, I learned in the program is relevant to what I'm doing on currently. Um, I mean everything from like food cost, uh, uh, human resources management, uh, dealing with customer relations, guest relations, uh, social media marketing, things like that. It's all very, very relevant nowadays. I was able to get my uh, ServeSafe certification, which is uh, important for managers. The best advice is just to uh, go in with an open mind and a good attitude, and you'll, you'll probably succeed. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Kirk Street is a man of many talents. Not only an athlete and a sportscaster, but also an expert cartographer, an amateur alchemist, a surprisingly gifted poet. What rhymes with encroachment? But his true talent lies in the art of banking. With Renaissance Bank's great products, rewards, and easy to use online tools, every transaction is a masterpiece. You might refer to Kirk as a Renaissance man. But I call myself a Renaissance man. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to the ICC Hour on Super Talk Mississippi, 101.9 FM. Big event coming up here on campus as we're going to host our Code Red and Blue, and we're going to talk about that today with one of our recruiters, Miss Tyranny Key. And Tyranny, uh, thanks for joining us for the show today. Hello, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, Tyranny, if you will, before we kind of talk about the event, let's learn a little bit more about you. Uh, tell us uh, where you're from and uh, kind of your background before coming here to ICC. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Tierney Key. I am one of the new recruiters here on the Tupelo campus. When I go out, I like to say that I'm recruiting for all campuses. Um, a little bit about myself is I'm from Baldwin. I graduated from Baldwin High School. I went to ICC after graduation, ended up transferring to the University of Ole Miss with a degree in journalism with a minor in business. So before I got the recruiter position, I worked in the news station for a bit and figured out that wasn't my niche. So I ended up getting this job and now I love it. I love being here, being able to recruit, being able to help others. So just a great place to be. Well, we're proud to have you as a member of the ICC family here and familiar background whenever you're coming from that television side of the world. Uh, it's, it's a unique side of the world. I've been there myself. So yeah. tell me, what is the uh, code uh, red and blue uh, coming up? Tell us more about that. Um, yes, sir. So Code Red and Blue Day is just an event where all where our health science programs can highlight each of their programs. So this just gives the students who are interested in any of those health science programs a hands on experience to see if that's something that they really want to go into and what it's like being in those programs. All right. And then uh, when when is this event and where is it? 
Uh, yes, so this event will take place next Friday on our Tupelo campus at the Health Science Building. So we'll have two sessions. So check in for the first session. We'll start at 8.30. And then for that second session, you can start checking in at 10.15. All right. So let's say I'm a pr prospective student and I'm interested in participating in this. What can I expect or maybe what some things I need to bring as well? I would say I would tell students to expect expect a hands-on experience um, to have an open mind about the activities and scenarios that they that they have going on. All right well Tierney what do we hope prospective students can take away uh, from this event? Um, with this event I hope that future students can take away um, the importance of the healthcare field along with them trying to figure out which part program best fit them. All right and then one more time uh, remind everybody uh, just an overview of what uh, Code Red and Blue is, when and where and everything takes place. Yes, sir. So Code Red and Blue Day will take place next week, which is February the 10th. And this is to represent all of our health science program. And it will be housed on our Tupelo campus at the Health Science Building. That's awesome. Well, Tierney, I appreciate your time. Uh, and I know y'all are busy getting ready for not only uh, the code uh, red and blue, but you also got orientation and so much more coming up. So I appreciate your time and uh, glad to have you part of the ICC family. Thank you. That's home. <laughs> that's just like the Ravens. That's just like Pahokee, Florida. Um, that's my second home. I got my degree from there, my first degree, college degree. It's part of my heart, it's part of my soul, it's part of my spirit. And you know, it's everything. You're the one with community college, baby. Uh, it's, it's everything. It shaped me up to being a great man because it was part of the journey of me becoming the young man I am today. And um, it's home, man. That, that's that's it. Like I can go there and lay my head down without no problems. It'll woman community college, the best star here. Kirk Herbstreet is a man of many talents, not only an athlete and a sportscaster, but also a maestro of the clarinet, a famous speed solver, piece of cake, a noted cheese connoisseur, Limburger. But his true talent lies in the art of banking. With Renaissance Bank's great products, rewards, and easy to use online tools, every transaction is a masterpiece. You might refer to Kirk as a Renaissance man. But I call myself a Renaissance man. Little Caesars is now the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Let's go! Oh, pizza, 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 pizza. Come on, keep it hot. It's good. Pizza, pizza. Again. Harder, readier. Let's go, let's go. Pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza. No, pull. High five. Pizza, pizza. pizza. Come on. Whoa. Pizza, pizza. We're ready. Enjoy game day with a fanceroni pepperoni with over 100 old world pepperonis. Pizza, pizza. Today tastes like a home game, like a huddle. Tastes like we're bringing the heat and like a front row seat. <laughs> Today tastes like we're a team and it never tasted this good. And welcome back to the ICC Hour, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to explore all the unique opportunities that you can have here at Itawamba Community College. And one of those is a new program we started a few years ago, and it's going to be the uh, SI program. And joining us is going to be Mr. Nathan Ward, and I'll let him kind of explain to you a little bit more. But before we get to that, Nathan, how's it going? Uh, everything's going good today. Uh, busy with some meetings and tracking some students down, but other than that, it's been a pretty good day. So, so just another day in paradise. That's right. Just uh, another day, uh, another day in my job, just uh, kind of all over the place, how, the way I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you're the director of institutional support. No, <laughs> instructional support. Yeah, it's going to be instructional support. Yes, yeah. I, I, knew, I knew I would mess that up. But uh, all right. So let's talk about the SI program once. Uh, tell everybody what the SI means and then what it is. OK, so a few years we uh, started a program that's called Supplemental Instruction. And supplemental instruction is what the title says. It kind of supplements the instruction that students are already getting. And so what's unique about it is that I, uh, I hire students uh, 
that are trained and they are teacher recommended and they go through all kinds of processes with content and spend a lot of time with faculty and, and division chairs and they're trained to basically be teachers aides. Uh, and so they help students in specific classes, our English classes. In the past, they've helped with a lot of our math classes. Man, when COVID hit, they helped with every class. Uh, but now they're more, more focused in the, in the, they concentrate their English classes and uh, some of our newer math classes, uh, the quantitative reasoning class. Uh, so my, my hirees are ICC students helping ICC students, but they, uh, they have the ability to, to, to be kind of like a teacher's aide, a teacher's assistant in some ways. <clears throat> they don't do anything that a teacher does like grading or teaching the class, but uh, they have access to the directions and access to uh, all the study guides and everything like that. So it, uh, uh, we started that three or four years ago and it's kind of progressed and built to, uh, we, we see all kinds of students all the time daily. So uh, it's a pretty good program. So that's kind of where this new uh, director of instructional support started. <laughs> and uh, so now it's kind of blossomed into a whole lot of other areas in our, in our department. So. Absolutely. I think that's really one of the most unique things about uh, this program is the fact that it's student. It's not student. You guys lead it, but the students are the ones helping other students so yeah. they can relate to them knowing their everyday stresses, stresses in the classroom. Yeah. And it may allow a student to feel they're able to talk to another student more freely than they would be to a professor. Yeah, that was the that was the point of the whole thing is that in, in a way to help our instructors you know, we have office hours. Students very rarely feel comfortable coming to us the first time. After that, they, if they'll come to us the first time, they usually will come back. Uh, but there was just something about talking to another student. And so when we go through our training, what we actually tell our SI leaders is when a student comes to you and let's say they're talking about something that you've never even heard of before, it's not an assignment that you did when you were in the class. What I want you to do is to tell them what you would do in that situation because you're a student. And if you had to write that paper or if you had to study for that test, how would you go about it? But when they hear a, another 19 or 20 year old talking about it versus somebody, you know, I taught English for 23 years. When I, when I say it to them, it, it sounds so easy in my head. I just want you to do this thing. Uh, but sometimes that gets lost in translation to students and they get frustrated. So it has eased a lot of the frustration for students. Uh, we hope that it's helping support the faculty that they are there. I know they're seeing better results in a lot of areas and at least with students in class, knowing what's coming, knowing what they're being asked to do. So I think it's been pretty beneficial in that in that way. And we're talking with Mr. Nathan Ward, uh, Director of Instructional Support here at ICC. And, uh, you know, you talk about that, it, it taking, uh, I don't want to say taking work away from our teachers, because our teachers obviously want to be there and help. But that was going to be my next question is, since it started, since it's grown, ha have, have you seen results in the classroom? Uh, yeah, we keep up with the results pretty frequently. We, we keep up with uh, how many people come to us. Uh, we keep up with their with their grades. We do grade checks sometimes to make sure at the end of the semester, we'll see how many of them ended with A's, B's, and C's. And we've definitely seen an uptick uh, in retention uh, and in their GPAs, uh, their grades. We'll see more A's than we usually do or more B's than we usually do. And um, you still have, there's still students. You're still going to have some withdrawals. You're still going to have some kids that just are not doing the work. But I think that we've seen that kind of decline. And as far as the, the teachers and workload, they do, they carry it. Uh, they carry it. They have to have constant communication with their specific SI leader. So they meet with their SI leader about every week. And then their SI leader uh, goes to the classes and says, this is what they want. And it, it works. There's a lot of harmony there. <laughs> if, you, if it's done right, we have to choose the, we have to hire the right people in these roles and the faculty have been amazing working with them and uh, hopefully producing, you know, future teachers and uh, future you know, instructors and professors. And of course, we're all over the board with who we hire. We've got, uh, we've had former engineer uh, students and uh, my son was worked for us and he's now in like sports information and business. And so they're, they're majors kind of all across the board, which 
works well with the students because so are theirs and they just get to talk and they develop relationships. And if nothing else, it gives the it gives our students a place to go to feel more comfortable with what they're doing. And they develop these relationships with the SI leaders, which in turn helps them develop these relationships with the instructors. Um, as far as let's just, for example, as far as numbers are concerned, just in the fall, uh, this was probably our largest semester that we've ever had. As far as we saw over a thousand visits. Wow. But we saw probably 400, somewhere between 400 and 500 students. Uh, some of them come once, some of them come every other day. Uh, we had well over a thousand visits and probably somewhere between 354 or 425 students come in uh, just for English. That's not counting any other class that we might have uh, tried to help somebody in. So, uh, and then those grades, yeah, the grades are definitely. Uh, I would I would say higher based on what I've looked at my research. So, uh, but I'm a little biased. Sometimes <laughs> I may be I may be skewing the results just so everybody will think it's great. <laughs> well, I, I know one thing, and of course we don't like to talk about COVID, but you know these kids missed a lot of important one-on-one -on -one instruction in high school coming to college. So I feel like this program really has picked up maybe and helped with the part of that they missed transferring from high school to college, but it just seems like that the SI program is even more important because of that. Yeah. COVID hit and everything just went haywire. And you, there has definitely been a, a kind of a lull in not necessarily just in student, but you can tell that there were some gaps in learning, you know, she went straight online. It was about turning stuff in faculty in high schools were doing the best they could to get everything done we had to go all online and then there has been kind of a, a, a kind of an aftershock of all of that it took everybody about a year to get back into the swing of just going to school we're still seeing that a little bit i think the students were kind of chomping at the bit to get back to just normal so on campus uh all of our activities on campus have been largely uh, you know, uh, students everywhere. That block party, I didn't go, and I'm glad I didn't because I get claustrophobic because students were everywhere. So they were kind of longing to get back toward that. But then in the classroom, you did see that there was still this kind of disconnect to get back to the pen to paper, fingers to, com to computer, turning stuff in. And so we spent a lot of time in our, in our instructional services helping students get on Canvas, helping students turn stuff in on Canvas, answering a whole lot of TIS questions about, uh, I can't get this to open up and how to do this. We do spend a lot of time doing that. Students did, uh, they come with a lot of questions and sometimes it's just simple stuff, but you can tell it's because we've been out for a while and trying to get back into that. But I would say overall, we're, 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 moving, we're moving, progressing very quickly back to where students are they uh, they seem to be to a point now where they are aggressively uh, trying to get back into the, I need all A's, I need A's and B's, I'm trying to get on the president's list, dean's list, that kind of stuff. The attitude of a lot of students that I have coming through. Playing on tour takes years of dedication hours of practice, focused precision, and nerves of steel. That's how you become great at the game, but not how you should bank. That's why Ali Ewing chose Renaissance Bank. Their easy to use app makes banking a breeze, no matter where she is. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Ever since we opened our doors in 1964, Davis Ford and Fulton has been committed to providing the highest level of customer service and customer satisfaction. That level of commitment is shown in our 18 Ford President's Awards for overall customer experience. Whether you're looking for a tune-up, a trade-in, or a new F-150, the team at Davis Ford is here to serve you. Come see us today in Fulton, call us at 662-862-3711, or visit us online at davisfordsales.com. Davis Ford, small town dealership, small town prices. This broadcast is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, 
Little Caesars in Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, Davis Ford, First American National Bank, TM Realtor Agent Ricky Murphy, Max Home, the ICC Baptist Student Union, Cagle Eye Center, Bank Okalon, Samstown Market in Mantachi, State Farm Insurance Agent Brandon Poland, the ICC Wesley Foundation, the ICC Foundation and Alumni Association, and donations to the Sports Information Indian Club from viewers like you. Talk about what uh, classes you do offer the, uh, the uh, help in. Okay, so, and you may not know this yet, I did get, uh, I, I came out of the classroom, my last uh, classes I taught last summer, uh, and so as the Director of Instructional Support Services, we now offer in a couple of different areas some things, so we actually have our, uh, our SI program, and those students work in Comp 1, Comp 2, um, any paper that you have to write for another class, they'll be glad to help with that. They help with public speaking, with the research and the outlining and that. Uh, we're also helping in the QR class, that quantitative reasoning math class. Um, all of our higher level math courses now, the, the instructors are kind of handling that tutoring uh, because there's now an applied side and a non-applied side for math. And the majors were really needing to get in touch with those instructors, the, the math majors. And so we are helping with QR there. It's brand new, so we're struggling to, we're making sure we get all that right. I used the wrong word there, but we also have a couple of tutors that we have hired that are our professional tutors. Uh, we have uh, Miss Casey Lockridge, who works for us full time on both campuses uh, with, the, with the quantitative reasoning, and if there's anybody in intermediate algebra still. And then we have Dr. Kimberly Poland, who's helping with all of our anatomy and physiology classes. Uh, she spends uh, time on Fulton and time in Tupelo working with those students. We have SI in Fulton, in Tupelo, and for the Belden campus. We're not physically on the Belden campus, but all of those students that are in English classes there, they take their classes online. And so any online English student and the, and the, those math classes that I mentioned, that's, uh, that's pretty much what we handle right now. Uh, when any student comes to me though, needing help in any subject, I try to find a way back to where the help is. And so like right, right now, I've gotten a couple of emails about we need some help in accounting. And so we're going to try to get them, the students back to the instructor to set up some time for that. Uh, the math department, that's what they've been doing. I know they do some, some college algebra tutoring on their own time. They do some uh, trig tutoring and probably some cow tutoring on their own time. Uh, so we tried to set that up. If students come to us, we try to refer them back to that instructor to set up some of those times. And so we pretty much just anybody that needs help, if you need to find a place because you don't know where it is, if you'll come find me in our tech ed building in, in, in Fulton, I will go find where you're supposed to get your help. So but another example of ICC just going that extra mile. Uh, to help make sure that our students are successful here. Uh, you kind of touched on it there. How can, now what do they need to do to sign up? Do they have to go through certain procedures or do they just got to come find you and your team in your office? Now for the, uh, for the English classes, every English class on any campus has its own personal SI leader attached to the class. So they can find that SI leader's uh, email in their Canvas shell. Same goes for the quantitative reasoning class. If, um, uh, if, if you need help, you should have Miss Casey Lockridge. Her email should be in your Canvas class. And um, we also just tell students, you know, email me. I'm very easy to find. You can email the Instructional Support Center. Uh, we're on, we have an instructional support page on the homepage of ICC. It'll say instructional support. You'll see my email and my phone number there. Uh, you can always just come see me, come find me. I'm very visible. Uh, I'm in the Tech Ed building for the most part every day. I come to Tupelo about once or twice a week, so you can find me there. But I have uh, an assistant, uh, a student uh, worker in Fulton that knows how to get in touch with me, and everybody knows how to get in touch with me in Tupelo. So uh, the easiest thing is to find me, Nathan Ward, 
862-8164. Yes. <laughs> That's probably the easy thing, and then I'll get you where you need them to go. Uh, there's just plenty of email addresses, and uh, there's there's just ask anybody, and they'll yeah. kind of direct you in the right direction. Or, or just walk around campus and say, hey, where's Mr. Ward? And everybody will point you that way. Everybody will point you to that <laughs> guy over there, yeah. Uh, well, I, I see on the website as well, you got some helpful links and tools. And uh, it's really it's really neat to see that you guys have even thought about this, but it's how to overcome test anxiety, uh, how to take notes, uh, basics of library, yeah. uh, net tutoring. Uh, you got the owl writing lab. I'm I'm currently dealing with that now. Going back to myself. <laughs> You've been on the owl, have you? Yeah. Uh, I'm saying I may need to go read that myself. But <laughs> strategies to improve your reading and the relief fund application as well. So that just goes to show you guys have really thought this out and has a really good plan put forward for our students. It's just up to the students to use it. We really, our goal, my goal has, even when I was teaching, the goal was about success. It was about you being better when you left us than you were when you came to us. I've always just wanted students to, to do the very best they can. I don't need you to be something that you're not, but I want you to, you know, do your very best and know that there are things out there that can help you. Um, the transitioning from high school to college is difficult for everybody who makes that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're coming to ICC or if you're going straight to Ole Miss or State, there's a transition period and it's tough. People think, well, I've been, I've been writing essays for years. It'll be the same thing. It's not really the same same, same goes for math. Your ninth grade algebra class is not preparing you completely for college algebra. I can tell you that personally, uh, that happened to me. I thought I was fine and I wasn't. But we want to be very visible about uh, helping the students no matter what the issue is. Um, so if it's they need more support in the classroom or if they need help learning how to study because they've never had to do it before, or they should have done it and they never did. We try our best to have all kinds of methods. It's, it's a thing we've been building for, for a few years now between uh, Rachel Steele, our last coordinator, and, and Dr. McCraw, uh, who has really, we didn't try to infuse a whole lot of extra. You know, if you're around Dr. McCraw you, for long, you're gonna be doing something that's gonna yes. be helping some student somewhere. And, and but myself, Dr. Summerall is really about uh, the vice president. She's really about finding students where they are and then helping them get to where they need to go. And that's always been my passion. When I hire SI leaders, that's one of the first questions I have is, do you care about these people? Do you care about these students? Because that's really what you're doing. You're showing them that somebody cares enough about them to sit down with them and tell them, why Mr. Humphreys is saying this on your paper or why Mr. Gerald has marked this and you need to do this or um, not just, you know, bring them in, run them through, get them out. They, they sit down and spend a lot of time with them and they develop relationships with them where our whole department, students want to come back. They want to, they're return visitors, return visitors because that's what we want for them in their classes. I want them to go to comp one and I want them to in, not just learn, but enjoy the process and then come back. I want them to come back in January. and <laughs> I don't want them to get through December and say, well, I think I'm going to take a gap year. I want you to come on back. And then the same thing for in the summer. You know, we have all kinds of summer programs. There's classes you can take. I want it to be kind of continual. If they know where the support is, uh, that makes that easier. And what we try to tell them is that, well, these levels of support are here, but when you transfer to your university, you're they're there too you just have to go you have to go find them so we're going to help you find them even when you get there um it, it it's just a, it's just the heart of the matter is that you have to treat the student holistically and try to because they're all at different levels they're all different people and so uh, we just try to meet them where they are and then get them where they're going and sometimes it uh sometimes it takes a village but that's why we're icc right so. Absolutely. I think that's a, a great way to uh, kind of cap off that conversation there well, because it is true. You know, not everybody's the same. It's not a cookie cutter way to uh, do education anymore. And you've got to, uh, as you said, meet them where they are and encourage them to be the success that they can be. That's so, correct. Nathan, I appreciate you uh, taking time out to talk to us today. Uh, we'll probably revisit Absolutely. with you a few more times and uh, just sit down and chit chat. And uh, man, I hope you have a good week. 
Absolutely. Anything for you, Brother Gore. You're my favorite. <laughs> so whatever you need, I'm going to I'm gonna try my best to supply. Well, I appreciate it. And we'll be back with more of the ICC Hour right after this. Why settle for a checking account that just holds your money? Renaissance Rewards Extra gives you so much more. Like savings at more than 400,000 retailers, 24-7 roadside assistance, a cell phone protection plan worth up to $400, $25 in ATM fee refunds per monthly cycle, and a great interest rate when you meet three easy qualifications. Get extra today at rewardsextra.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is what we anticipate, what we work for, what we want to improve. At Itawamba Community College, we offer the courses, pathways, and the training that can help turn your vision of tomorrow into a reality. So why wait? Your tomorrow can start today at Itawamba Community College. The best start here. Electrical technology is, here at ICC, is a program where we take students in and teach them from the fundamentals of what electricity is all the way to very advanced concepts. It takes two years, it's four semesters, and you would always have to start in the fall because the, semester, the courses are taught fall and spring. So in other words, the courses that are offered in the fall are not offered again in the spring, so you have to start in the fall and it takes two years. There is a huge demand right now for electrical technicians in the workplace. As we all know, manufacturing has gotten very automated and very technical. And, and we cater, we meet that, that need with our program here. So our, our students are, uh, are, they're definitely gonna have opportunities once they graduate, even opportunities while they're going to school here through the internship program that we have. Most of our students in, on the internship program are in that 14 to $16 range and then once they graduate and uh, most industries does a, a, a pre-employment exam and then they test to see where those students will fit into their to their pay scale uh, I would say that most of them fall in that uh, 18 to 22 dollars uh, an hour uh, after graduation so it's a really really hands-on program so that that's another thing that students need to be aware of uh, if you enjoy working with your hands and, and the, the physical aspect of, of using tools and, and doing a job, uh, then this, this curriculum would be something that you need to look at. There is a, a good bit of programming, but there's that you're not just going to be a programmer. You know, you're going to be a multi-skilled electrical technician, which means that you'll, you'll do all of the skill sets, not just the programming. Electrical technicians in manufacturing are the number per manufacturing facility is going up because the technology used in all of manufacturing is going up exponentially. I mean we just get more and more automated and autonomous in our manufacturing processes which means that we have to have a really skilled person to maintain those processes and keep them functioning. So the, the maintenance technicians today are all by and large have a huge electrical background to be able to do what they do with the automated processes that we manufacture today. And it doesn't matter what you're manufacturing, whether you're building cars or tires or body parts or, you know, it doesn't matter. All manufacturing processes are automated at a really high level today and continuing to grow in that, in that area. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. If this just cost a little bit less. Let's take a look at that with the Renaissance Replay. Make the right call with over 400,000 shopping discounts right from the Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking app. Might be a little while before I get to the bank. That's an incomplete pass. Let's give it a Renaissance replay. Renaissance Mobile Check Deposit. Make the right call and open an account with Renaissance today.
And welcome back here to the ICC Hour on Super Talk Mississippi 101.9 FM. As always, the ICC Hour being brought to you by our friends over at Renaissance Bank. They are the bank that understands you, and you can find out why by visiting renaissancebank.com. We're going to continue on some of the big events that's coming up here at ICC, and in my opinion, none bigger, none more important than orientation, because that's when we welcome the newest members of the ICC family to all three of our campuses here. And joining me now is going to be Michael Holloway and Madison Haley. And Michael, uh, thanks for joining us. Madison, thanks for joining us. Uh, Michael, I'll start with you, let you introduce yourself to everybody who you are and what you do here at ICC. Thanks, Adam. And hello, everyone. My name is Michael Holloway. I'm a director of recruitment and orientation here at ICC. So I get to work with uh, an incredibly talented team and uh, across the college to help welcome prospective students to ICC and get them plugged in and find their fit here. And Madison? Hey, hi, Madison. I am a recruiter here on the Fulton campus. So I get to work right under uh, oh. Mr. Holloway and just recruit all the students um, in our counties. Well, guys, I'm going to throw this question out there. So either one of you uh, that wants to respond first, uh, you don't have to ring in or anything to uh, respond first. But uh, tell me, what exactly is orientation? So I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, orientation is a um, experience where students get to come in and first off, they get to meet other prospective students. We have orientation leaders who are current students um, that they will be assigned to a group with. And then they also um, get to come in and make their class schedule for the next semester. Um, they get to hear from multiple um, people at the college. Um, so it's a really, really fun experience. They also get to see the campuses and get their ID picture made. So it is really that initial step that they get to see into the college. And so how and when can prospective students register? I guess not prospective, but if they want to come, they're students. But uh, how and when can they register for that? Registration goes live February 1st, Adam. And students can sign up for that online. They just go to iccms.edu slash orientation. And they'll be, to read, they'll be able to register for a session uh, that fits their schedule. We have 15 of those this year, Adam. Five in April, five in June, and five in July. Um, only thing a student needs to do to register, they'll need to apply for the college, apply for admissions first. They can do that on our website. Uh, on apply.iccms.edu. And once they've uh, made the admissions application, they're able to go over to the orientation page and sign up for an orientation session. So let's talk about this. Is it just Fulton, Tupelo, or where, where and when are these sessions offered? So we have sessions on both the Fulton and Tupelo campus um, in those dates of April, June, and July. Um, so they can go to either one of those. And typically on most days, we're going to have two sessions that day. So we'll also have we'll have an 8.30 a.m. session and a 1 p.m. session. So they can choose um, whichever one works best for their schedule. Well, Madison, I'll, I'll ask you this question. Why is it important for people to attend orientation? Well, Adam, I think it's especially important um, for the student and the parent because we will have a parent panel um, so the parents can come and hear the same information that the students are getting and ask questions from current students that are our orientation leaders and really get an honest answer from them. Um, and then I also think it's important for the student, one, because like I said, they're getting their student ID picture made that day, so that's important. Um, and then also making that class schedule. And it's just really important to come to the campus, see the campus before you, know, you start classes in the fall um, and be able to familiarize yourself with the campus, with the staff, with the other students. Um, and obviously make your class schedule. Um, so there's some obvious reasons there, but also just some house cleaning things, making sure that you're getting ready for that next step because it, it is a transition from high school into college and it is different. Um, but we definitely want orientation to be a very welcoming time. So we think it's really, really important for students to attend. Absolutely. And once again, we encourage you to visit iccms.edu to find out more about orientation, those dates. And again, remember, in order to go to orientation, you have to be an ICC student here. Visit apply.iccms.edu. Well, Madison and everyone, I thank you all for y'all's time today and I uh, look forward to talking to you again in the future about uh, bringing some more potential students here to ICC. Absolutely. The best start here. Thank you, Adam. We'll be back more of the ICC Hour right after this.
Ever since we opened our doors in 1964, Davis Ford and Fulton has been committed to providing the highest level of customer service and customer satisfaction. That level of commitment is shown in our 18 Ford President's Awards for overall customer experience. Whether you're looking for a tune-up, a trade-in, or a new F-150, the team at Davis Ford is here to serve you. Come see us today in Fulton, call us at 662-862-3711, or visit us online at davisfordsales.com. Davis Ford, small town dealership, small town prices. The slices and the sticks. All I ever wanted for dinner was pizza, Marcy. And all I ever asked of you was sticks. <gasps> <gasps> Don't choose. Get Little Caesar slices and sticks. Half pizza, half Italian cheese sticks. And Dane's awake. <gasps> Dane. Dane. I smell bacon. <laughs> End the dinner drama with hot and ready slices and sticks. Or order online for new jalapeno or bacon sticks. Pizza, pizza. HVAC stands for Heating, Ventilation, Air Conditioning. Oh, it is a trade program that is uh, dealing with home repairs to industrial refrigeration repairs like you'd find in a convenience store to a supermarket. The degree program is two years. Uh, it is uh, four semesters. Uh, at 15 hours each semester. Uh, there's about 15 hours of academic classes that will be needed to be taken for the degree. With a two-year degree, a person should be able to get a job doing repairs, being a service tech for a local company, to being a self-employed uh, individual. During the program, we get the EPA certification, which allows people to handle the refrigerant and the charge of systems. There's also NATE certification that are available to students at the completion of a two-year program. An entry-level person can probably experience pay in the neighborhood of about $14.50 to $17 an hour, uh, with raises going up to the points of $22 to $23 an hour. The demand for HVAC technicians has been really well for the last few years. A lot of the technicians are older people that are at retirement age and are leaving the field, so there is a big demand for new, experienced uh, personnel. The curriculum is made up of 12 classes in the HVAC that are three-hour college credit classes, starting out with levels of someone not having any experience to getting a person to the level of getting, their, getting a job or becoming self-employed. There's also 15 credit hours of academic classes for the associate's degree that can be done online, or in the classroom on the Tupelo or Fulton campus. I like this industry for the reason of being able to go different places every day for a work environment. It's not always at the same location. Uh, the other thing I like about this is it's a field that's easy to start your own business. They, nationwide, one out of every seven that finish a two-year degree end up owning and operating their own business. Kirk Hub Street is a man of many talents. Not only an athlete and a sportscaster, but also an expert cartographer, an amateur alchemist, a surprisingly gifted poet. What rhymes with encroachment? But his true talent lies in the art of banking. With Renaissance Bank's great products, rewards, and easy to use online tools, every transaction is a masterpiece. You might refer to Kirk as a Renaissance man. But I call myself a Renaissance man. Here, you can be your best. The best train here. Learn here. Succeed here. Perform here. Win here. Thrive here. Itawamba Community College. The best start here. And that's going to do it for this week's ICC Hour. Again, I can't say it enough. I greatly appreciate everyone that uh, takes time out of their Tuesday afternoon to join us for the show. If you happen to miss any of today's show or any past shows, uh, they're available on YouTube. All you've got to do is search the ICC Hour. That, again, is just the ICC Hour. And there you'll have this show and other shows. And don't forget to subscribe to the page while you're there. Again, I want to remind you that you can visit iccms.edu to keep up with all things ICC. That's iccms.edu.
www.edu. And then you can also visit letsgoicc.com to keep up with everything athletically here at the college as well. Now, social media is your thing. Again, you can find us there, Itawamba CC, all one word, Itawamba CC, and Let's Go ICC on your favorite social media platforms. This is Adam Gore. I hope you all have a great week. And as always, Roll Tribe. Brought to you by Renaissance Bank. The bank that understands you. Learn more at renaissancebank.com.